The Monerotopia Price Report segment is sponsored by Local Monero. Avoid using KYC exchanges. Buy and sell Monero directly for fiat, peer to peer. Oakley Dokley, I think you're on. All right. All right. So take it away, my friend. So uh, we've had about two weeks now without a price report, and a lot of stuff has happened. So I'm going to fly. Uh, hopefully, you know, I don't run too fast, but uh, let's get into it. Um, okay. So uh, big news is that the Fed hiked rates by 25 basis points. The market was expecting that. No big deal. Um, we're looking at here the inflation numbers, which came out like uh, I think the week after Fed did the, the 25 basis point rate hike. Um, the, the numbers are still coming down, but you'll notice that they've kind of slowed down. So uh, these were the numbers from last month. And then these are the numbers from, um, I think this was last week. So, um, you know, we're, we're finally below 5% on the CPI. Um, the core inflation is still sticky and that's largely because of rents. Um, and then the producer price index is down at 2% basically. Uh, so that's really good on, on that front, um, kind of, good signs that maybe we could renormalize the economy somewhat. The Fed's balance sheet uh, basically flattened out. Um, remember, we talked about the March, you know, printing to save the system just enough um, so that it didn't collapse, but not so much that, you know, we have a new bull market or anything um, or a crazy bull market. So as of the last um, the last numbers here from last week, um, basically that, that flattened out. So maybe this isn't quite um, going to come all the way back down here which to me would be a good sign that we're not necessarily going to have some crazy major washout because if the Fed balance sheet continues to go down and down and down, um, that, that would be kind of a bad signal for risk assets and for cryptos as well. So um, this flattening out is maybe kind of a, a little bit of a good sign. Um, one thing we talked about previously too is these housing starts, uh, the, sorry, the single family home prices and how basically in the springtime, we should see this go back up. So this right here, the fact that it started going back up, if this sawtooth continues up into the summer, that should kind of indicate that um, the housing market isn't about to collapse, um, at least the, uh, the retail housing market, although there's some questions about the commercial, uh, commercial real estate and whether that's a problem. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at the interest rates really quick. This, um, this right here with the white, uh, this, this, this bump right here, that was the Federal Reserve raising up 25 basis points. The gray lines are the short term three and six month. And then you've got all your other ones here. You, you can see that we're basically still pretty inverted on the yield curve. I, I made a little bit of kind of a fix to my overall yield curve inversion down here in pink. Um, basically, uh, I had disincluded the one year on this. And that was because I was getting more data from like more historical data. But I really wanted to see the full yield curve inversion, which involves factoring in the one year. So basically, we've got pretty much still heavily inverted yield curve, more so than uh, pretty much at any other time in the past. Uh, so that's just one thing to keep in mind. We haven't started correcting to a normalized yield curve. If this thing shoots up and the yield curve starts correcting, that has historically been associated with large market crashes, along with the Federal Reserve rapidly dropping rates. So right now, it seems like, like steady state there. Uh, the next thing that we'll look at is the US 10-year. So the U.S. 10-year is basically stable. It's been flat for a while now. This is good. This, this essentially gives us an idea of stability in the system. We're not looking at things that are terribly dire or terribly bullish either. One thing that is important that we've seen now is the U.S. dollar index, the Dixie, has broken out of kind of its local, uh, its local chart pattern here. So you can see back, we'll just, we'll just uh, go backwards a little bit. We'll go to the daily here. So... This kind of correlated to the bottom of risk assets and obviously the top of the dollar index and it's sort of been falling ever since. We've been talking about for the past, really for the past month or so, that this was still kind of a downtrend. I was really kind of hoping to hit this down here. My thinking was that that would give us a big bump in risk assets, including crypto, including Monero. That didn't really happen. We have been talking for a while about how we, we expected the Dixie to eventually reverse and try to make another run to the upside particularly because we see this divergence here on the Z-scores, which are a momentum indicator. So we were seeing momentum divergence to the positive side, even as the trend was still down on, on the representation of, of the dollar index value. And now that we've broken through this, really as of last night, um, it's, it's possible, like this thing can break and then maybe come take one more test down here, but this thing should be expected to, to start going up. 
So that's kind of a signal on the negative end that would say, hey, maybe the markets need to pull back, maybe crypto and stocks need to pull back. Uh, we'll get to stocks here pretty quickly. Um, we'll take a look at oil and then we'll be close to done with the macro. Um, so we've been looking at oil for a long time. This is kind of the weekly chart. So we get a big picture, broad view. These dotted lines right here are going to be the next place where we're gonna see support for the oil price. I think this is good. Going below this right here would kind of, to me, signal problems like what was happening with the COVID. Oh crap, I'm not, I always forget, I'm not supposed to say that word on YouTube. Uh, but with the whole you know uh, thing that happened in March, 2020, which shall not be named. So anyways, basically oil has broken down from its local structure, which to me isn't a big deal at all. I, again, flat, stable is a good sign. We, we just wanna see things remain how they are. And I think that's what the Federal Reserve wants. I think that's essentially what the government and the leaders of the economic system want right now is just to basically keep the ship steady and, and not let anything too crazy happen, whether that's... Okay, so um, we're talking about oil. It looks like it broke down from this local structure. We've had this drawn out really for months now. And uh, this is not a bad thing. This area down here should act as support. That's very strong support. It's very natural levels that we've seen for, uh, for, for years, really. So um, that's oil. And uh, oh, let's take a look at the Federal Reserve overnight repurchase agreements. This thing is stable. You can see we've got this like megaphone pattern. I'm not really sure that that matters anymore. It might. I'll leave them there. But this megaphone pattern might not, not really matter so much, right? We're basically just kind of trending here. Um, it's possible that if we break this line here, that could signal, that would maybe corroborate like the Dixie's moving up and maybe we're going to get a pullback, something like that. But for now, um, this is just flat, steady, nothing really, nothing really big going on there. Um, let's take a look at gold here, getting into the more sovereign type assets. And um, we, we saw the potential for gold to make big breakouts. And I, I've been saying this for a long time. I, I like being in gold right here. It's, it's strong, it has very low downside, and it has significant potential to revaluate at some point here. And, and, and I kind of use this as my play in terms of like, I don't really know exactly what the market's gonna do necessarily or when it's gonna do it. And gold tends to start spiking up sometimes when you don't expect it. So it, it's a good way to save money with the potential that maybe it could get a big revaluation here in the next say months to a year or so. Uh, but at any rate, for the meantime, we're kind of looking at gold had the opportunity to break out. We're seeing kind of like uh, this almost looks a bit like a shooting star. It's very, very close. Let's go to the weekly. It's very close to sort of this, um, you know, kind of like this big long term lifetime uh, limiting resistance here, uh, looking at the weekly chart now. So it, you know, we do know that the powers that be don't like gold to be going up too much. They like to keep it. Um, down as much as possible. So we, we've got all these wicks here on the weekly where it's like it tried to get up, it tried to get up, and, and it's just having too many problems. So we might see some kind of pullback on gold here. That wouldn't be too surprising. I would hope that it could hold this area uh, and then start moving up again. One thing that we know is that if markets are going to go on a reversal, gold tends to go with it. It seems to be loosely correlated with risk assets now, and it tends to lead risk assets into bull markets. It, it definitely led the, um, this little mini bull market that we've had so far. Gold definitely led the way into that. So um, yeah, we'll just have to keep an eye on this. I know I've got a lot of lines drawn here. I don't want to get too into it with gold at the moment. Um, we've, just had, we've just got too much to cover. One thing that I've started doing now is combining Bitcoin and ETH market caps. I just, I, I think that they are both very, very relevant now. People say that Bitcoin is the God market of crypto or whatever. It's, it's the daddy of crypto. You know, at this point, ETH is equally as relevant as Bitcoin, especially since Bitcoin is now basically just doing shitcoins like ETH does. So um, essentially this chart right here is the market cap of Bitcoin and ETH combined. Uh, you can see that we kind of got this little bit of a broadening structure on the way up. This splitter line right here, uh, kind of got taken out recently. But really, if you look at this being the August highs, that's why we drew this, uh, this dotted line right here. We're basically sitting at the dotted line. And one thing you can see is that this, is, this wick down here almost kind of looks like a shooting star. So any movement back to the upside could very well, that, that could be mildly positive, right? We, we're not looking at like necessarily having to come all the way down here, although that is possible. The other thing to note about Bitcoin total um, pretty much most of the crypto charts right now, or at least Bitcoin total and Ethereum, um, this sort of structure that we've drawn here with these lines kind of being the bounding range, these lines can be drawn so many different ways that it's hard for me to really be convinced that 
any one of these lines in particular is the best line to draw. Uh, this gets more problematic when we look at Bitcoin in total, which we'll do in a second. Uh, but overall, this is kind of like what the, the sort of like big, big, broad picture of crypto looks like um, when you exclude shitcoins. Um, maybe I should add Monero in here as well, just so that you know, I, I don't want to accidentally call Monero a shitcoin. That's not what I was intending to say right there. <laughs> okay, so um, all right, let's take a look at the NASDAQ really quick. NASDAQ has been in this big upward channel basically since November of last year. And it's just like, just been positive, slowly, mildly positive, just kind of working its way up there. I wouldn't really expect that this is going to get beat at any point. Oh, sorry about that. I wouldn't expect that this is going to be beat anytime soon uh, like that. So pretty much, you know, just kind of expect that to happen. I, I mean, it could also go to, to the downside as well, but just don't expect any massive like breakouts. Um, the other thing to think about is that last year in March, this was sort of, uh, or sorry, not in March, um, the August top last year for the NASDAQ was right here. So that's kind of why we draw this dotted line as well. Um, but anyways, like it's it's still looking mildly positive. Some part of me on a shorter timeline might want to try and draw like um, a, a rising wedge, you know, like to try and draw a wedge structure right here. I'm not entirely sure if I would believe that, but it, it, it's possible. This could be a rising wedge. Um, so just know that that's there. The S&P isn't doing quite as well as the NASDAQ. I guess there's still some banking lows. We still get some institutional failures. Um, but at any rate, we are still looking at positive momentum movement on the Z-scores, and the S&P is still kind of like moderately positive. It, it's really it's really having problems with these um, with these levels right there. So um, that's the NASDAQ. That's the S&P. Um, we got the SSE composite. I kind of drew a new line. I, I previously had this line drawn as kind of like a rising wedge or, or something like that. Um, I, I ultimately deleted that line. Uh, I just you know had to cover it because I didn't want to be dishonest and be like, you're changing the lines. Uh, so anyways, this bottom line right here looks like a more appropriate line to draw now, having abandoned the rising wedge from previously. And the SSE composite is just Shanghai, China, which tends to be positively correlated overall with, with global markets, global risk markets. Um, the next thing, we'll go ahead and check out um, Bitcoin in total, just because everyone's always watching Bitcoin. Sorry about that, guys. All right. Um, okay, so... Okay, so we kind of fell out of this uh, this yellow box that we'd drawn here. There was right around uh, right around this moment right here. There was there was a rumor that the United States government had sold off almost ten thousand Bitcoin again, and then so the market dropped. I don't know if the market dropped because of that rumor or if that was just a convenient excuse. Right? Is it is it the cart leading the horse or the horse leading the cart or the market makers leading the plebs? I don't know. But at any rate, uh, we did fall out of that. We're sitting right now at this very very long. Um, this very, very long uptrend line. It's really the last sort of uptrend line that you could draw from, um, from all the way back to 2015 on Bitcoin. So we're basically sitting there and that, that's why that line is, is a little bit darker uh, or a little bit um, bolder than, uh, than the other lines around it. So again, overall, like this still looks okay to me. You know, this is kind of, it's a bit of a bummer. Like we really wanted to be playing up here and then maybe trying to break this 31,000 level. Um, th there's no reason that that doesn't have to happen. One thing, another thing that's important to point out here, let's go ahead and delete that yellow box. We had a bit of a head and shoulders. So that would be uh, the shoulder and the head there. So the downside target from this would be somewhere like 24,000, right? So it doesn't have to go all the way down there, but maybe like that area could be, could happen. Here's 24,000 right there. Um, these, it's a smaller structure, so it's not really quite as important, but I have started to pay more attention to head and shoulders lately. Um, they do seem to, to be significant. Um, Let's go ahead. Uh, we don't need to look at total. Total. We're just trying to fly through this. Uh, Bitcoin Ethereum. It, it's important again that we keep an eye on Bitcoin Ethereum. Um, we we just want to keep conf confirmation that a sea change is happening in crypto. And I think with all the NFTs and, and the BRC twenties on Bitcoin, we are now seeing sort of fundamental reasons why this sea change could be happening on crypto. And ETH BTC is a significant marker of that for me. So again, just in line with understanding the fundamentals, understanding the markets that we're playing in, uh, we are seeing continued strength on ETH BTC. Um, it's not necessarily like immediate strength. We don't necessarily have to expect that this should break to the upside, but we are seeing positive divergence on the Z scores, and we've been seeing this for a while. So it would be totally unsurprising for this thing to pump to the top side. It doesn't have to do it now, but overall, this chart still has a lot of, um, let's just call it bullish hopium uh, baked into it. Okay, and finally, we can go to Monero. 
And so we had all our predictions here. <laughs> I guess um, I guess we were only off by oh. Uh, 23%. Oh, you know, I mean, that's not bad. Crypto moves hundreds of percent. So anyways, those were our calls. Um, so we've got the weekly here. We, we had our final boss trend line. We basically broke it. Let's zoom into the daily now. And one thing that happened is we broke this line uh, in a very similar way that XMR BTC broke its trend line, like its massive trend line from, uh, from last year when we finally broke, when XMR BTC finally broke through, it was like up, down, up, down, up, down, you know, whatever. And then finally, finally made it through. Um, that seems to be a similar story happening here with the Monero US dollar. So this right here, this line was the primary like final boss resistance line. And then it seemed like, I don't know, it's just like this, this new line here, this new capping line just magically appeared. And now we're just kind of in this channel, um, sort of trending down a little bit. I think that's on purpose. I don't think it's an accident that Monero breaks resistances this way. I think there's probably a lot of pressure to prevent Monero from breaking resistances. There's a lot of fighting that happens there. Probably a lot of shady stuff that we'll just never know about. We can only maybe guess and speculate on. Um, at any rate, we are coming up um, eventually here in a couple months on like the very, very long-term um, uptrend line right here. So the one from, you know, really from years. Uh, we've also kind of got this this minor line right here. We're coming up on that as well. I mean, I, I really, I'd rather not hit that at all, but I mean, that might happen. At any rate, um, one thing we might sadly need to expect is that if crypto goes on a pullback in general, this, oops, um, this area right here would be something to expect if we get a pullback in crypto and stocks. So just, yeah. just know that um, while things are largely steady, there are conflicting signals that Dixie is trying to rise now. That doesn't mean crypto can't rise with the Dixie. That can happen um, simultaneously, but the, the signals are starting to look a little bit more conflicted, although um, you know it does look like broad stability. So let's take a look quickly at Monero and Bitcoin, uh, or Monero versus Bitcoin. So on, on, the, on the daily chart, we for a while we had this kind of like falling wedge. We broke through it, we came back down, and then uh, and then ultimately, you know, we saw the real pressure for the movement here uh, manifested itself. Even though it's like th this right here, that that shouldn't really happen. Like, I mean, okay, everything's probabilistic. The way we look at these charts, anything can happen. Um, but it just seems like I see more of this on Monero. It's like you break a structure, it should be bullish, and then it's not bullish. So at any rate, um, you, you can kind of see that we have now what looks like still kind of a wedge. Let's delete this line because that's a little confusing. We still got kind of like this descending wedge, which it looks like we've broken. Um, but I wouldn't put it past necessarily, you know, the powers that be to try and force this back down. Really, the answer to what happens with XMR BTC is going to lie in where the broad crypto markets go. So if if the broad crypto markets are positive and everything's going up and everything's pumping, well, this is going to come back down. Like that's just how that 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 works. So let's take a look at the weekly just to get a better um, feel for that. So you'll remember XMR BTC. We had this broad um, tr like lifetime triangle. This should be where those yellow circles are. That should be very good support. Um, so we might, again, we might end up down there. If XMR BTC price starts rising, um, that, that might be another kind of signal that, hey, um, the markets are taking a, a pullback. But it's not a leading signal that happens in real time. We've also got XMR Ethereum, where XMR sort of broke this descending channel right here. And it's kind of on its way up. We'll see if that can continue. Um, Right now, you know, I mean, it looks nice. Like, it's nice to break this structure to the positive side, and it's definitely confirmed at this point. This, I mean, on the balance of probabilities, these kinds of chart structures should continue to go up, right? XMR should continue doing well relative to Ethereum. So maybe there are fundamental reasons, though, right? Maybe maybe XMR and Monero is getting a little bit more attention now since Bitcoin has had problems. I've even seen guys um, out in the Bitcoin space that are, like, basically totally mostly pro-Bitcoin say, hey, I'm, I'm getting interested in Monero because of all the shitcoinery happening on Bitcoin, um, we didn't think that this was possible and, and now it's happening. So there's a little bit more openness I'm seeing out there, which could be a fundamental driving force for Monero going up uh, relative to Ethereum and Bitcoin, even if the, the crypto market stays reasonably positive. Um, and the very last thing that we'll take a look at here after I clear away my proprietary scripts um, is Bitcoin versus NASDAQ and, uh, and total versus NASDAQ. So this is the daily chart. You can look down here on our x-axis to get a feel for what the timelines are like. Basically, it had broken out. It was looking very good. And then now, um, I don't know what the deal is, but uh, Bitcoin is just having a hard time holding some key levels. 
Um, right now, you would you would call this dotted line right here a key level. Um, that's been a key level. So hopefully um, we would see this hold. Hopefully we would see this continue to go up there. Um, and then total versus the NASDAQ. Um, hey, what happened to it? All right, well, I'm not gonna try and look for that. We don't really have time today, but uh, just use Bitcoin versus NASDAQ as kind of a proxy here. There was a lot of good stuff happening. It seems to have gone down. One thing that might concern me about this chart is that this right here does look a bit like a head and the shoulders. So the downside target from that would probably be somewhere around here, which we kind of almost made too many squigglies happening right now. Uh, we, we almost made the downside target from that head and shoulders. So hypothetically, this thing might have washed out sufficiently, um, especially with that wick down. Um, so hopefully we can get a little bit more positive action. I was really kind of hoping that Bitcoin could make the mid thirties to, to maybe the low forties um, before we get like a, a really major washout, which I think is still a, an acute possibility later this year. Um, but for the meantime, things look stable, but there does seem to be growing risk in the markets in general. So that's the price report today. Um, hopefully, uh, hopefully you guys got something good from it. Awesome, man. Awesome. So what do you think? Was was there any Monero-topia effect uh, with regards to Monero-BTC ratio or is that uh, other factors? Oh, let's go down to the uh, to the lower time frames and see. I, I mean, mean it you saw transaction count, right? We hit an all time, well, not an all time high, but we hit a recent high in transaction count on on the during the weekend. Uh, we hit thirty k daily transactions. Um, yeah, that was beautiful. Looks like um, had a three hundred percent increase in, in downloads from Mexico. Uh, I think but, it yeah, is possible. Are we dreaming? Is there an actual effect? No, I think it is It is possible. It does seem reasonable that there was an effect. We were definitely in an uptrend um, before Monerotopia, but probably this spiked up right there um, did have something to do with Monerotopia. That would be yeah. very unsurprising. Yeah. Um, in terms of the ratio, I mean, yeah, we were we were kind of in a, in a mild uptrend, but then as we got into Monerotopia, yeah, there was, there was definitely had, had a much more significant uptrend there. Um, so it probably was a factor. It's hard for me to say how much of a factor in terms of the XMR BTC ratio, but um, but I have to imagine it, it probably was somewhat of a factor. The transaction count that was a very significant upswing. But like you said, I mean, I, I think obviously that was due to uh, the 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 uh, congestion in the Bitcoin network, right? It's probably more likely that it was attributed to that. It, it could be, you know, it could be both. Yeah. You know what? Screw it. It was all Monero Tobias. Yeah. You're welcome, uh -huh. everybody. Well, aren't you sweet? <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, because I think we, we saw other other cryptos, their transaction counts go up as well. So uh, which oh, is great. Which is great. I think I think it was uh that's beautiful to see, right? Um Bitcoin kind of kind of failing as digital as Bitcoin's failing as digital cash, people are are opting into to other cryptos that are doing that aspect better. Um, so. Yeah, I mean, I hate to I hate to celebrate on you know on any Bitcoin failures or anything. Um, we really had hoped for more, but it, it's also kind of like, well, you know, we we do kind of want reality to it to assert itself at some point, and not just have the rose colored glasses like Max Kaiser at the Bitcoin conference. <laughs> you know. Yeah, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Um, all right, man. Thank you so much. Thanks for doing this after a, a long week of Monero. <laughs> a long weekend, hey, thank a you. month of Monero. The, the Monero oh, Tokyo was amazing, and uh, I really appreciate everything you guys do. Yeah, thank, man, th you. thank you so much for everything, man. Yeah. The, the price reports and then helping us out with the event and everything. Gr greatly So we hope you had a fabulous time. Yeah. Hey, that was free booze. That, you know, that was easy. Yeah, that was <laughs> it. That's true, actually. <laughs> you did well manning that stand. <laughs> did everything right. I could. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah. All right, guys. Talk to you later. All right. Talk to you later. later Bye-bye.